In 1982, at the invitation of Cardinal O'Fee, the renowned sculptor Imogen Stewart, who died this week, made a very distinctive bronze crucifix for the sanctuary of St. Patrick's Cathedral, which she called the Tree of Life. Unlike the traditional crucifix, it shows Christ exalted. His suffering is over. He is the saviour of the world, and his body surges upwards. The arms of our Saviour not only embrace all humanity, but they're also raised up to heaven, pointing us to God. If you look closely, you can see that the face of Christ is shrouded, which tells of God's mystery and the mystery of faith, which is revealed for us in the incarnation, suffering, death and resurrection of Christ. Imogen Stewart's crucifix therefore unites Good Friday with Easter Sunday. It connects suffering with joy and death with new life. It's a vision of hope. The cross of Christ is the tree of life. In the opening pages of the Bible, the story of creation tells of a tree of life planted in the very centre of the Garden of Eden. The fruit of the tree of life provides the gift of immortality to Adam and Eve, the first human beings whom God created in his own image and likeness. But after Adam and Eve disobeyed God's command and ate the fruit of another tree, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, their relationship with God was damaged. Through the serpent's temptation, sin and evil entered the garden, bringing envy and hatred, violence and death. Humanity was therefore barred in shame from the tree of life and banished from the peace and harmony of paradise. But the story of the fall does not end there. We're never cut off entirely from God's love. The fall ends with a promise, a hope that one day God would send a redeemer to win victory over sin and death, to restore the relationship between earth and heaven and reconcile us to himself. And that promise is fulfilled in the coming of Jesus, the Son of God, which marks a new creation. Jesus is the new Adam. Paradise, once lost, is now restored through his life on earth and his death and suffering and resurrection. The tree of death is the tree of victory. The cross of Christ is the new tree of life. There's an ancient legend of Seth, the third son of Adam and Eve, taking a branch from the forbidden tree at Eden and planting it at the place where his father Adam had been buried. The place was called Golgotha. And the legend tells us that many years and generations later, the hard old wood from that tree was used to make the cross on which Christ died. Venantius Fortunatus, a sixth century composer, mentions that story in his hymn, Crux Fidelis, Faithful Cross. Faithful cross above all other, one and only noble tree. None in foliage, none in blossom, none in fruit thy peers may be. Sweetest wood and sweetest iron, sweetest weight is hung on thee. Isn't it striking how St John tells us that near the place of the crucifixion there was a garden in which there was a new tomb and after they took Jesus down from the cross, they laid his body there. So on Easter morning, after he had risen from the dead, Christ was first seen by Mary Magdalene walking in a beautiful garden, as if in a new Garden of Eden. The Bible ends with a description in the book of Revelation of a river filled with the water of life flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb and on either side of the river the tree of life abundant with fruit and healing leaves. I think Imogen Stewart wanted visitors to St Patrick's Cathedral to see in the tree of life crucifix our Saviour Jesus Christ who is the way, the truth and the life. We're especially conscious this Easter that we live in a very fragile and troubled world. From Gaza to Ukraine, to the seemingly intractable problems at home with addiction, housing and migration. 
At times, we can feel overwhelmed by the suffering. We can feel stuck in the sorrow of Good Friday, unable to experience the joy and hope of Easter Sunday. In these moments, it's worth remembering that the cross of Christ is the tree of life, which inspires us to keep binding up hearts that are broken and bringing good news to a wounded humanity. Mother Teresa once said, never let anything so fill you with pain or sorrow as to make you forget the joy of the risen Christ. May you and your loved ones have a blessed and happy Easter.